Welcome to another episode of the Rocks of Utah. And today we're looking at some Pleistocene deposits that were deposited only about 25,000 years ago in a mountainous valley in the High Uinta Mountains in northern um, part of Utah here. It's probably one of the more dramatic and beautiful places uh, in Utah. Um, we tend to think of Utah as being mostly red rocks and deserts, but it also has some very high mountain ranges, uh, including the high Uinta Mountains uh, in the northern part of the state. And today we're looking at this particular valley and its geological history of how it formed, that is the geomorphology of this valley. And we are at kind of at the mouth of the valley, we're looking down, we're looking uh, south. Uh, the mountains are in that direction. And we're going to be going up into the mountains and look at how the valley changes and some of the interesting uh, deposits that we find in this river valley that were laid down only 25,000 years ago during the last uh, ice age or the last glacial period in Utah's history. Last time we had uh, glaciers in Utah. And the interesting thing I want to point out in this valley down here is that this is a typical V-cut valley. So if you look up on the cliffs, they're pretty steep and they form sort of a V shape. As we move up into the mountains uh, and gain some elevation, we're gonna get into some of the glacial parts of this valley and we'll see how that shifted and changed the, the shape of the valley itself. And uh, it's just a beautiful day to get outside. Um, in the late fall and also see the changing of the leaves that are happening, um, especially some of the, um, the aspen and cottonwood that are changing uh, colors um, down here. So join us along on our adventure. Look like there used to be a river here. Yeah, in the springtime, this is a river. So Felice, I want you to make a scientific observation. What is the shape of the rocks you're standing on? Uh, kind of, kind of, uh, I don't think they're very pointy. How would you describe the rocks? Are they round or pointy? Maybe, uh, maybe pointy. Cause <laughs> <laughs> really? They're really pointy? Do you think you could you could punch holes round. using these? They're round, right? Yeah. So we got round rocks here. What do you think? How did you think these rocks got here? By a river. By a river. Why do you think a river caused these rocks to be here? Because water um, pushed them. Because water pushed them. Do you think that's why they're round? All right, try to find a rock that's like a sphere. Do you think you can find a rock that's a sphere shape? That's like a ball? Shaped like a ball? I bet you can. Here's a good one that's about ball shape. <clears throat> that one's very round, kind of ball shaped. Can you find a ball shaped one? See who can find the rock that's shaped like a ball, a sphere. All right, so let's see this rock. Is this the most ball-like rock? It tastes like dirt. It tastes, well, I didn't tell you to eat it. <laughs> I just said, let's, let's see it, let's see it. I uh, know. All right, judges, here's mine. Let me see, let's see yours. I think yours is more ball-like. Mm -hmm. Yours is more spheroid. Here, let, let's see it, let's see it. Put it in front of the camera lens. There you go, very good. Mine has this flat part here, so I think you win. All right, you have the current winning rock. And let's see your rock. The really round, oh my gosh, that looks like a ball, doesn't it? Yeah. Look at that rock. It looks just like a ball. Daddy, daddy. Look at that round one. Yeah.
So what we noticed is that down here, kind of towards the mouth of this valley, the rocks that we find are very well-rounded rocks. In fact, it didn't take us too long to find rocks that are very spherical. They're like balls. They're very well-rounded. And this is very typical of rocks that are transported in rivers. Now we're gonna head upstream up into the valley, a little higher in elevation, and see how these rocks change as we move up toward the mountains. All right, I'm about a half a mile up, that's all, about half a mile up from where we were before. And we saw those nice rounded rocks, very spherical. And I've actually come up the river and now let's take a look at the rocks. This pile of rocks in particular, which is an amazing pile of rocks. Now, this pile of rocks represents a very different geological process than what we saw down in the creek bed. These rocks, as you can see, are much more angular and pointy and projected. And you can see that they are not in the creek bed. These rocks are just tumbled like a wall. In fact, actually walking over here, you notice them kind of a little bit high up above the river valley, which is down there. And I'm up here on the sides of the valley and seeing this big jumble of rocks. And these rocks are not like the rocks that we uh, were observing down below. In fact, actually it'd be very difficult to find a very rounded rock. Many of them are very angular, like these. Very pokey, very angular rocks that obviously were not transported by rivers. It's very challenging to walk across and film at the same time. Oh my gosh, look at these rocks, guys. What is this? So these are glacial deposits. This is a terminal moraine. This is a terminal moraine. Very cool, isn't it? means that this giant rock pile represents something really amazing geologically. They weren't transported by rivers. They're much too angular for that. They were transported by a giant glacier that existed here 25,000 years ago. And we knew it was 25,000 years ago because these rocks, their exposure to the sunlight basically changed the chemistry and they've dated how long these rocks have been exposed here. You could also use the, the amount of lichen growth as well, but they've been here about 25,000 years, which means that 25,000 years ago, this part of the valley going up was filled with a glacier and that these rocks came tumbling out of the glacier when it reached its most, uh, lowest elevation point where it started to melt and could not transport these rocks. And so it builds a natural rock wall in the valley. And this is, I think, one of the best examples of a terminal moraine deposit in Utah, the spectacular Ashley Valley terminal moraine. I've seen a lot of terminal moraines in Colorado and in Utah and different valleys, but this one, when I came across it, is just so spectacular. It's such a classic example of what a terminal moraine looks like. What these rocks are is something called till. They've been pushed down the valley from the mountains by a massive glacier that existed here at the last glacial maximum. 25,000 years ago. So I'm up the valley a little ways, about a mile or two, and the valley itself starts to change its shape. Um, and if you look behind me, 
you can see that there's an escarpment, a cliff up there. Very stiff. That's kind of typical what we saw down below. But then below that, there's like a shelf. You can see where those aspen are up there. And that shelf there is a lateral moraine. And basically, you can see how high the glacier was in this valley as it came along and deposited and basically caught the rocks that were falling off of this cliff face onto the glacier that were then transported down to the terminal moraine that we saw down below. So this valley that we're driving up into, instead of being a V-shaped valley, like we saw before, it's a really wide valley. In fact, look at, it's, it's not very steep. You could easily walk up that, that incline there. And then it, fairly wide U-shaped valley. And that's very typical of glacial valleys. It's a very beautiful, little stream up here, a little mountain stream. It's uh, amazing to think that this valley was once a glacial valley and filled with glaciers and now it's all melted in forest. Is there snow? No. Snow? No. Where's the snow? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> This is such a beautiful place. We're up on top of the uh, mountains, kind of looking down into these old glacial valleys um, with the leaves changing. Uh, it's late September, so perfect time to see the leaves changing on the aspen trees. And uh, down in here, we have some beautiful um, valleys that would have been the places where these ancient glaciers during the last ice age would have settled. Um, and sort of given birth to them. Um, there's a few cirques. There's not a really good one here, but a cirque is basically a bowl that's cut into by the growth of a glacier. And uh, you can see some that they're kind of forming back here in this mountain. But this would have been sort of the hills and up into um, Lighty Peak and Marsh Peak, which are over in this direction, would have been the source for these glaciers to come down into these valleys. Uh, but these valleys are basically cut, uh, remnants of cut uh, erosion caused by these glaciers that were moving down through these high alpine uh, valleys. Down and then dumping that big wall of rocks that we saw down in the valley, um, which is the terminal moraine, which is the farthest um, down valley that these glaciers, these alpine glaciers had gotten here in Utah. Um, a pretty remarkable process and it leaves behind this wonderful, these wonderful uh, cut and incised valleys, these U-shaped valleys that we have here in Utah in the Uinta Mountains. It's just a beautiful, beautiful view from this, this spot.